fucking. Well, hey, good for you on that <laughs> end, though. I mean, seriously, good for you. Yeah, look, when I got my kids, you know what I'm saying? They come far, far beyond anything that I'm doing. You know what I mean? That's how it operates for me. Yeah, good. <sighs> As it should. You know. My... But uh, no, the um, only thing I ask is uh, tag my channel because um, you know I'm deal. getting more traction. You know what I mean? So You know the deal. And I mean, I got you. I got you. Right. So like, okay. So what, what niggas is calling this small fucking shit is the Bugadeen, right? And this is, uh, you know, you know what Bugadeen means? Nah, go ahead. Okay. You know what the Boog is? Nah, like treat me like I'm a complete imbecile. Oh, no, what are you talking about? Asking. All right. So like when they say they're going to kick off the Boogaloo, right? You know what I mean? It means like, you know, we're going to get the motherfucking collapse started, right? Um, when I hear we're going to kick off the boogaloo, I think uh, lock and load Paul Revere's riding down the street. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, And the Bugadeen are the individuals who are going to be fighting this war. Oh, so me and you. There okay. we go. The Bugadeen. All right. We are the Bugadeen. Now, so here's, here's a question, you know what I'm saying, the conversation I do want to have, right? And this is something I was trying to talk to my father about earlier, but he wasn't interested in really talking about it because he got hung up on some dumb shit. With everything being a Ponzi scheme, you know, I mean, Social Security, Medicare, the 401k system, all this bullshit. Um, at what point do we start looking at our kids and go, I'm going to have to train you not how to go to college or be well educated. I need to train you how to survive. When do we start, like, really thinking about making that switch? Um, I think the the honest answer is now. And the the thing is, man, um, I don't know about your your children, but mine hear me talk every day, right? I do my radio show. I, I do my thing. And they hear my political view every day. Um, if anybody knows about politics, it's probably my kids. Those poor little bastards. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they have yeah, to hear me yeah. talk about this constantly. <clears throat> but but you know what that does? It it influences their tendency going forward. Yeah, but they're always gonna have the baseline of where dad said this. Maybe they'll disagree to be a rebel. But then again, they still have that baseline. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about deeper than that, though, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking about much deeper than political philosophies. Like, you know, like we can stand here and teach our kids and, you know, educate our kids about, you know, like how things operate and shit. But on the same point, like you eventually have to get to the level where you're educating them on the ability to, you know, I mean, feed themselves and close themselves. And, you know, what I mean, like be the proper type of individuals where they they are able to get by you know what i mean on their own and i think that's that's a that's a different conversation right where like yeah because a lot of us don't have these skills right because like our parents didn't have these skills because our parents were spoiled brats like my father he's you know, I mean, like he moved far away from being, you know, I mean, a fucking an Appalachian, you know, I mean, fucking 30, 40 years ago before I came along. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand what you're saying. And um, the answer is um, yesterday. Um, my kids already know how to fire a firearm. I've already taken them out shooting. Um, the youngest, the four-year-olds, they have not yet participated because they're not old enough yeah. to respect yeah. the weapon. But once they are, they will learn. Um, and my 12-year-old daughter, she definitely knows how to fire a firearm. You know, I'm the one that taught my wife how to shoot. I had to take her out with a rifle and teach her how to shoot. And she was a grown woman. No, um, I'm making sure that they know what they're doing. Now, that's not everything, though, because you had a lot of caveats in there. You had, you know, growing food, um, how to collect rainwater. That's a thing. You need to know how to do that and keep it pure and clean. I mean, there, there's a lot of different aspects that come into this. But as a starting point, Knowing your political philosophy and having a solid footing there 
and then knowing how to defend yourself. I think that's a good starting point. Okay, I mean, like, all right, so, like, the very basics of that philosophy is, I think, what KRS-One said. He said, are you a free man or have you been freed? Right, and that's that's the very beginning of the conversation. You know, I mean, that conversation comes to, all right, even if they have you enslaved, they have you enslaved, and, you, you know, I mean, you're fucking bent over fucking picking cotton, you know what I'm saying? You're looking for a way out. That's a free man. You know, I mean, when you're in that jail cell and, you know, I mean, the first opportunity you have, you've taken the fuck off. That's a free man. You know what I mean? That's that's different than the man who thinks that, you know, what I'm saying somebody gives him his freedom. You know, what I mean, that thinks that that piece of paper means a fucking thing in D.C. Um, um, yeah. You know, so that's that's an that's an important thing to state and to understand. But on the same point. I think you have to be able to, you know what I mean? Like, when you're looking at all this and you go, where is this heading? You know what I'm saying? Like, because we can't continue on in the manner in which we're continuing because eventually it'll get down to the point where you're going to have to provide for yourself again. Well, you know what I'm afraid of? And this is um, me being completely honest, Pinoid. Um, This is what I'm afraid of. You know where we're heading? Hmm. We are heading towards a, another war between the states. Um, and if it gets really bad, a war between the federal government and the individual, which is even worse, which means you have multiple states in, in uproar. You, you don't know where the battle really is, and you're, you're directing your military to kill their own family. Where are they going to stand on that? We don't really know. Well, there was uh, there was recently there was a 61 year old man in uh, Maryland who ended up getting red flagged, and they came to take his weapons and killed him in the process. And that happened like a day ago or two days ago. That might be the first shot. That might be no, the shot heard no, around the world. No, no, that already happened though, right? In Maryland, there was a kid who you know, I mean they red flagged, and they shot him while he was sleeping next to his girl. Right, right. This isn't okay, though. I know. Um, It's gonna hit. It's gonna hit the wall. Uh, People like me, and I'm not saying I'm grabbing anything and running out into the street. People, don't get your panties in a fucking bunch. All right. Uh, I'm just saying, people like me with my political view, you can only push us so far. All right, because we are the armed minority. We are the ones who have the weapons. And we are also the ones that don't say, don't tase me, bro. We pull our fucking gun and shoot. All right? Well, that that gets... You you don't want to push us. That gets back down to the Bugadine thing, right? You know what I'm saying? Oh, fucking... So, all right. let's, Let's have this conversation. All right. So, I personally think, like, before things get very bad... Right. Because like what we're looking at is communism. Right. That that's really what we're that's what we're looking at at the moment is that with what they've done and the fact that they go, you know, you don't have to pay your rent. You don't have to pay your bills. We'll shut down all this fucking industry. It's going to come down to the point of fucking like where communism is very, very easy to fucking you know i mean be looked at and go like yeah you know i mean like why don't we just you know i mean continue on at this point because most americans are sick of working for the fucking wages that they're working for and spinning their fucking tires and fucking running up their goddamn credit card bill to pay you know i mean the other fucking credit card bill and you know i mean taking out fucking three hundred thousand dollars for fucking mortgages and shit like americans are sick of this garbage you know i mean they don't see a whole lot of future ahead of them And so communism is an easy sell. Socialism is an easy sell to individuals where you go, yeah, you know what? Just let the government deal with the bullshit. And I mean, then, you know, you can just fucking go about your motherfucking business. You know, like that's kind of the mentality. Like, I don't know if you've ever watched things like uh, Cracked or um, Wisecrack or fucking any of like um, fucking I'm trying to think. There's a bunch of other channels. uh, Knowledge Hub. Like, almost every video, they'll stand here and bring up fucking Karl Marx in their motherfucking, in their argument for whatever the fuck it is case that they're making. 
No, and they do, and um, especially Knowledge Hub. I know exactly what you're talking about um, because I have watched them. And no, you're completely correct. And people eat that shit up. And those same people eating that shit up come onto my channel or your channel and call us insane. Like, do you even realize what you're doing right now? Okay, you are selling your grandchildren down the river. That way you get one paddle. All you're going to do is spin your canoe in a circle. You only have one paddle. What's wrong with you? You don't even know how this works. Well, these, <laughs> well, these, well these, here's the thing, man. You know, like These people aren't strong enough to do for themselves. You know what I mean? And people are comfortable. People are lazy. Like, you know, this is why, like, I look at niggas like Doc or, you know what I mean, people, you know what I mean, like, um, uh, fucking a lot of these individuals out here who, you know, they don't have fucking kids and, you know what I mean, they think smoking weed's fucking cool and they think, you know, fucking standing here fucking doing acid and getting drunk and doing mushrooms and whatever the case might be, they think that's like the high point of fucking life. And I go, no, you know what I'm saying? Like, life is for the the living you know what i'm saying life is for the fucking yeah. enjoyment and shit and like living your whole life fucked up you know what i mean is not the way you want to fucking go about your goddamn business and shit you have a point but uh then again you're of certain people like okay you bring up doc and stuff like that yeah i'm not dropping acid every day but you know i have a few beers I still handle my business, though, bro. You know, I'm still taking care of what okay. I need to. So, like, you live you live right off of that fucking, um, what river is it you're right next door to? Mackenzie. You live right next to the Mackenzie River. When's the last time you took a pole out? Oh, not that long ago, actually. How long? Uh, but it was oh. actually in Louisiana. Um, no. A couple of weeks ago, I went catfishing no, 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 down no, in no, Louisiana. No, 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 no. I mean, at home. When's the last time? You fucking stood here and woke up in the morning or, you know, I mean, like fucking took your kids out in the fucking, you know, I mean, the evening and went and caught sunfish and catfish with them. Um, we've been on lockdown for not allowed to fish. So you're, not yet. No, no, you're, you're, you're allowed. You're allowed to fish. You know what I'm saying? No, we're not. Not in Oregon. Actually, they outlawed it, dude. They outlawed. We can't even go camping. Fishing. Yeah, we can't even go camping. Yeah. That's how draconian our governor is. That's why I'm pissed. Yeah. Wait, hang on. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look this up. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, there's no way it's illegal to go fishing. Yeah. Like no, it is. It is. Um, you can't go fishing, hunting, hiking, camping. All the national parks are closed in Oregon. So, I mean, go ahead and look it up. But I'm not lying to you. It, like, it's closed. But um, I get what you're saying. Um, no, me and my kids, we go camping every year. We go fishing. Um, they go fishing with their uncles and stuff like that. My mom lives right along the river. So they can just go over there and fish whenever they want on private land, really. Um, so it is what it is. But... I don't think that you need to persecute people for having having a vice. Okay, I mean, I get the vice tax. Maybe tax them a little bit. Maybe disincentivize it. But even then, I'm like, eh, do you nah, really need yo, to? Yo, actually, I'm looking at your, uh, your fucking state's uh, fucking game commission or whatever the fuck it is. You're, you're allowed to go fishing. Um, I live uh, right outside the national parks. We're not allowed to even go into the national park. Nah, like so, you're you're, nah. you're allowed you're allowed to go fishing on the rivers and shit. You're allowed to fish, and you're still allowed to hunt. You know, what I mean, as long as like you're fucking keeping six foot of distance between you and whoever the hell else is out there with you. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> right. So I have to be six feet away from my kid. No, nah, you have who, to be six uh, feet away from other anglers, right? But like your kids don't count. That's why, like, um, if like here, you like it's illegal to go in a store without a mask on. But any anybody under the age of like four, you know, fuck, they don't care. You're like, you're not gonna make a four year old keep a fucking mask on. Go ahead, you try. <laughs> you, they're gonna rip that shit off immediately. 
Right. But like, yeah, like, it, but the point, the point is this, right? You know what I'm saying? Like life is for the fucking living. Life is for the individuals who, you know what I'm saying? Are out here fucking enjoying it and motherfucking are able to enjoy it and do things with their lives that, you know what I mean? Matter to other individuals. And that's kind of where my mentality really gets down to. And well, I'm, I, I want to ask you then straight up. Hmm. Okay. Cause you brought up, uh, what was the last time you went fishing and this and that, are you throwing me in the boat with, um, how you feel about doc? Cause, no. um, no, I'm, I'm going to feel a I'm certain saying, type of way about that, bro. Cause hmm. I thought we were cool. No, I'm, I'm saying that alcohol, like, you know what I'm saying? Prevents you from living your motherfucking life to the fullest is what I'm saying. As an in general thing. You know, what I mean, like fucking like getting drunk on a regular basis does not allow you to fucking live your life to the fullest of what you can fucking live it. You know, if you drink, you don't necessarily have to get drunk, right? You oh, do I, realize this? Oh, yeah, I do. I do. But like, I know like the moment you start fucking drinking, the ability to go anywhere goes out the fucking window because you can't use your car. That's a fair point. You know what I mean? I, it's, <laughs> that, that, make, that makes life a pain in the ass. Like, even if, even if like the fucking river's like seven blocks away and you got six kids, you're not gonna walk them all over there. You know what I mean? Like fucking, you want to be able to fucking stand here. You know what I mean? And drive down to the river, and you can't do that if you're fucking drunk because, well, number one, it's dangerous. Number two, you fucking, you know what I mean? Like yo, fucking a cop catches you. Like yo, not only are you catching that DUI, but a child endangerment charges. You know what I'm saying? And if, heaven forbid you get in an accident, it, all of a sudden it's aggravated assault and fucking you're going to jail and dumb shit. It's fucking stupid. You know what I mean? But as I said, like, Absolutely. you know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind totally of mentality. It's, it's not worth the risk is where my mentality is. Yeah, but, um, okay, you also brought up marijuana. Um, hey, I smoke weed, but check it out. Uh, one bowl, like in my pipe, I will load a bowl. It'll last me three days. I take a hit every like eight hours, if that. I don't even know why I smoke anymore. I don't even think I'm getting stoned. You know what I mean? It's just habit at this point. <laughs> <coughs> then why keep doing it? Honestly, I don't know. Really. You have a point, right? Like, why even keep doing it? Because I'm not smoking. Like, most people will load a bowl and they'll smoke, and then they'll load another bowl and smoke, and they'll get fucking blitzed. I don't do that. I load a bowl, I take a hit, set it down. Maybe in four hours, I remember that I have a bowl loaded, and I pick it up and take a hit. Like, I like I only have, like, two problems with weed. One is, is the fact that, like, you can't get a job around here if you smoke weed, Right. Like, like that's a government issue, not a personal issue. But yes, I understand. Yeah, like you know, and like you, you have to you have to adapt. Like, and that's what this conversation is about: is adaptability. You know, I mean, like you have to adapt to the you know, I mean, way of thinking about shit. Like that old mentality of. Like, oh, man, things are stable, so I can just be, you know what I'm saying, a flake on the outside of society. You know what I mean? It's kind of not there anymore. And it hasn't been for a long time, right? Like, it used to be, like, I grew up and there was blue-collar neighborhoods. You remember? Do you remember blue-collar neighborhoods? Yeah. They don't exist anymore, right? They're not right, a thing. Right, they're not. Oh, um, well, they kind of do a little bit in California, like, um... Like, you could say uh, Baldwin Park was a blue-collar neighborhood, even though it was East L.A. and a majority Mexican. They're still blue-collar. Yeah, nah. Like the they, blue are the, blue. they are the workers, you know what I mean? Yeah, but like, like, blue-collar doesn't exist anymore, right? Like, it, it doesn't fucking exist in these neighborhoods anymore. Like, it's not like, how do I put this? Okay, so where I live at would be considered a blue-collar neighborhood. I'm on the outskirts of this city. Where, like, it's not super high crime, but your car will still get broken into if you leave it unlocked. Um, but, like, it's, how do I put this? Like, most of the people here are truck drivers or mechanics or fucking, you know, fucking, construction you know, people. Construction. You know, Tom, I, mean? I, I actually have a question for you. What up? Like, what up? straight up, dude. Um, I go to bed at night. Yes, I own a firearm, right? Right. I don't right. sleep with it under my pillow, though. Right. It's in my yeah, desk, right. um, locked away. That way the kids don't get a hold of it. I go to bed with my door unlocked. I am not scared at night. 
you're saying you live in a neighborhood where you have to lock your car or it will be broke into. Yeah. See, that's not something I have to deal with where I'm at. I'm in a rural neighborhood in the West Coast up in the Cascades. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to deal with that. The worst thing I have to deal with is a tweaker sneaking in my shed and stealing my table saw. And well, I would love to see him carry that table saw. Well, well here's, 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 here's kind of my point, right? And we were, we were touching on this a little bit earlier, and we'll touch back on it a little bit here in a second. But, all right, my point is, is that all these places where, okay, so that mentality that I was telling you about with, like, you know, fuck white people, you know what I'm saying, is because of the fact that I get tired of dealing with yuppies who want to go along with a system that's completely fucking them, right? And for instance, uh, the mentality that your property value should go up. Um, your house should be a home, first and foremost, right? It should be the place where you keep your wife and your kids and your stuff. And the mentality that your house should be an investment where it's a line of credit you can draw off of allowed the reason why it is that way is because of the fact that as your as your fucking house goes up in value every year so does your property tax and so does the government's ability to tax you on it and they collect more revenue off of you for that and the mentality that everybody around you should be the same way that you are in that you know, my property value is affected because you fucking, you know, I mean, you live with six kids in this fucking house or, you know, I mean, you fucking stand here and you have, you know, I mean, like fucking, um, you know, lawnmower out, lawnmowers out back of your house or you have fucking, you know, uh, fucking a dead car in your yard or whatever the case might be. Even though it's your property, you don't have the right to keep it as your property and stupid it as you see fit. You can't use it as a workshop because... The neighbors will bitch about the fucking noise caused out of your garage and that will affect the property value of my house because you're not as fucking, you know, I mean, um, well to do about what you do with your fucking house as I am. You know what I'm saying? And you don't you don't stand here and keep your grass exactly three inches and use Kentucky blue grass and you don't fucking stand here and have your siding this fucking color, you know, and you don't. You don't care about your house in the same manner that I do. That mentality fucks over the fucking poorer parts of our fucking society, which are trying to raise families because you care more about the value of, you know, I mean, the fucking domicile where you live than you do about the fucking community around you. That aggravates me to no fucking end. And it causes just massive amounts of problems in our fucking community. Yeah, um, and you're going, through, you're you're going through that right now, by the way. I am, yeah, no, and I'm agreeing with you. And a majority of which uh, comes from the fact that that makes everybody a bunch of busybodies and um, Karens, to say the least, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm sorry, Karen, but shut the fuck up. I, right. I don't care. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like, I, don't, I don't have to live the way you live. You know what I'm saying? Like, fucking, we well, no, all have... It was, Go ahead. it was funny, like, uh, you know, we were talking about those people in my house the other day, right? Yeah. yeah. And and they were standing there, and I saw, I saw it. I can't say a word, but I saw it. They looked over, and above my bed hangs my Confederate flag. And I saw them lock eyes on the Confederate flag and then look at me, look at my wife, and look back at it. And I was like, yeah, w that's right. We're white and we have a Confederate flag. Any questions? I, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I see you trying to work this out. <laughs> I, see your, I see the hamster in your brain running. He's running really quick, isn't he? <laughs> 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 well, you know, I mean, and this is this is the mentality that I get down to, you know, like this mental of like we should all be, you know, I mean, the same and think the same and act the same and do the same fucking thing is 
inherently fucking socialistic and i'm not with it like i like the fact that like america used or america used to be that like there was a whole bunch of different cultures here right it wasn't just one culture of people you know i mean like you had you know like fucking swedish people in one place and you know fucking eastern europeans in another and greeks here and chinese here and blacks here and puerto ricans and italians and irish and fucking czechoslovakians and like yeah it's beautiful because like you know you have like the food and the, you know i mean the fucking the culture and the language and the architecture and like as you drive up like across my state in particular because my state has always been like the um, like as you leave new york you know what i'm saying because you came into ellis island and shit you know what i'm saying and like you, you work and save some money and then you move to a place like here where there'd be steel work and then you'd build a house, you know what I'm saying, up along like the river or in some fucking town. And you could see the different architecture from the different types of people who fucking had come through. You know what I mean? Well, no. And the thing is also like, like, check it out, man. Let's say me and your neighbors yeah. in my yard. Yeah. I have the stars and bars, not the um, the flag of uh, the Army of Northern Virginia. No, the true stars and bars. I have it up in my front yard. You, you drag up an American fucking flag. I'm not going to walk over and complain on you. And I don't expect you to complain to me. And like, we're just representing, representing what we believe in. And both flags are flags of rebellion. Like, come on now. I mean, really, let's look at this fucking seriously. Okay. <laughs> The American Revolution was only a revolution because we won. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Like, it easily could have went the other way. <laughs> yeah, and then there would have all been rebels and pieces of shit, just like you say the Confederacy is. Well, George, like, and again, okay. you know, I got I to gotta bring back up KRS one more time because he said, you know, he said, look, George Washington lost almost every battle he ever had, but he out endured the British. Right. And right. that's absolutely true. Like that that that's truth right there. That's exactly what happened. You know, the teacher nigga. The you know, you gotta love the teacher dude, the real shit. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. He ran and he kept the army alive. That's all he did. You know where the real battles that were won were fought? They were fought by the Southern Army um of the Revolutionary War. They were fought by Daniel fucking Boone and shit like that. Like no, George Washington lost almost every battle he fought. I'm sorry to break it to you. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, like, we're not we're not talking about. All right. See, like, and this is this is this is how you win a war. Right. Like Vietnam didn't beat us like the Vietnamese didn't beat us because like they had more people than us. They beat us because they were willing to live in shit. They were willing to like hide themselves in holes and blow up fucking units as they came by and pick off people one by fucking one. You know what I mean? And like, yo, that's how you win a war. You know what I mean? You can't, this is all right. Like, yo, Machiavelli, like, this is why, like, I tell everybody, read Machiavelli, like, read, 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 read Machiavelli. Fuck, fuck Marx, read Machiavelli. Machiavelli will tell you, he said, look, you know, when you conquer a people, if you want to hold that land, you need to move there and you need to move your population there. Right. Because like, if you don't, you'll end up standing here having these individuals just basically fight a fucking guerrilla war against you and just be a constant state of fucking struggle and strife for your fucking military. Yeah, and it stretches you out, it drains your resources, and it's a waste of goddamn time. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> Occupation has never been a proper way to fucking, you know, I mean, conduct warfare. You know, it really never has. It doesn't matter, like, what military you go to. There is no one who occupied something unless, like, you did Bella Romanus. You know what I'm saying? Where, like, you murdered every man, woman, and fucking child who could carry a fucking sword against you. You know what I mean? And then you fucking moved your population into that fucking city or you burned it to the fucking ground. You know, that's the only way to really defeat a fucking people. You have to go fucking Roman and turn it into some shit. And, like, we don't do that anymore as a fucking in general. Yeah, no, and that's fair. And, you know, maybe I'm an asshole, but end of World War II, 
I wouldn't have split Berlin up. I would have burnt it to the ground. I would have put salt in the soil. And I would have said, hey, Germans, you don't have Berlin anymore. Good day. <laughs> I mean, that's it. It's done. It's over with. You lost. We won. Get bent. Oh, well, they, again, they wanted to tax them some more. And I mean, that's why they left that shit standing, you know, and like that mentality needs need to stop needed to stop as well. Um, because the Treaty of Versailles, Treaty of Versailles was fucking what actually stood here. You know, I mean, it guaranteed that World War Two was going to fucking happen, you know, with the war reparations. And they still did it anyway. Fucking Germany sat here and uh, fuck because they said they weren't going to do it. And Germany's still paying more fucking Israelis to this fucking day for fucking the Holocaust and shit. You know what I mean? And it's fucking ridiculous. I think Germany still, goddamn, I think they're still cutting fucking checks. Hell, like there, there's so many old fucking things that people have no idea about. You know, legit, it, it's fucking ridiculous. You know, and this is like this is what I'm talking about, like with your channel and shit, like bro, like. When we had these conversations about, like, what you should do, like, yo, you should have guys like this. Like, this is why, like, I love guys like MC and Doku, you know what I mean? Because they bring really good actual information to your shit, you know what I'm saying? And they fucking know what the hell they're talking about, you know? And, like, it, it allows you to have proper content on your shit, you know I mean? Rather than, like, a bunch of fucking British people talking about nonsense. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, fuck them tea drinkers. Yeah, like, I'm yeah. with you. You'll fuck those wankers. <laughs> they're not even people, as far as I'm concerned. Like them niggas. Like yo, I love I love British people. Like yo, because like they'll fucking stand here and try to lecture me about my country. I'm like, hang on a minute, motherfucker. Don't aren't you like fucking being forcibly goddamn motherfucking replaced right now by your goddamn government? And then on top of that, you know what I'm saying? They're trying to like stop the will of your people after you fucking voted for brexit twice <laughs> well no uh, i will i will say this um i brought up recently i'm like um guys you, you're calling me insane but um you know you still have a monarchy like you're kind of um kissing the boots of the queen right now they and then have, calling they me a have a fucking have. constitution well, they have a constitutional monarchy to be no. to be real about no, no, it. No, they but... don't. No, no, there's nothing written down. Um, yeah, I think actually you're right. I know. <laughs> Yo, why are they allowed to talk? I'm trying here. I'm trying for my British uh, fans. I'm trying. Um. Like, why are the Brits allowed to talk? Like, you niggas don't even have a constitution. Like, the fuck are you talking about? You don't have a Bill of Rights. You have nothing. Like, the last document you had that gives you any type of power is a Magna Carta. Like, <laughs> get the get fucked. <laughs> Real shit. Yeah. You're not allowed to talk no. about politics anymore if you're British. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, you just sit in the back with the popcorn, all right? <laughs> you you Run just the hang mic. out. Yeah, you, you just hang out. There's absolutely no reason for y'all to be trying to tell us what the fuck we're supposed to be fucking doing. <laughs> Get fucked with that bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, yo, look. My people, legit, my people, like, yo, look, I'm, I'm American, all right? Not only that, I'm an Appalachian. Not only that, I'm Italian, all right? Not only do we have a Bill of Rights and a Constitution, right? But on top of this in Italy, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, you have the mafia. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, legit. Like, yo, not only, not only that, we have, we have two forms of government. One is, like, you know what I'm saying? If you want to go to court, you can. If you don't, you go talk to your local Donna, and they'll take care of things. You know what I'm saying? And you'll pay the fucking fee to him, and then you go on about your goddamn business. Like, yo, it's... They don't, like, yo... Again, yeah. Hey, can I get can I get a call with uh, Tony? I need to talk to the YouTube mafia. <laughs> <laughs> my, boy, my boy Eric's not up right now. <laughs> like, or else I'd, I'd get fucking fat Tony over here. But like, I'm like, I'm fucking, I'm gonna make you a fucking phone call. <laughs> yeah, okay, Scooby, calm down. <laughs> oh no, fuck Eric's. Eric's hilarious. I don't know if have, you met Eric. I think before I, I invited you to the uh, server. Yes, uh, I did uh, the other day over on your channel. Actually, yo, he's he's the coolest I guy ever. Legit. 
But no, uh, and like the switch uh, gears a little bit since I brought up the Scooby thing, man. What the fuck is going on over there? Like these these motherfuckers, they still want to pick fights with us. Yeah. Like they still want to swing at this side of the YouTube. No, yeah, yeah, look, really, okay. guys. Some, Messiah Keck, Messiah Keck put out a video yesterday or the day before, and I posted it up in Adonis's Adonis Paul's channel. Um, there's a Discord uh, server and shit. Oh, I think all three of them, I do believe. Um, one of them might be Gigas. I'm not sure which one's which. But anyway, fucking. So I posted up a fucking Messiah Kex video over there, and um, what did he? Oh yeah, Messiah Kex said that fucking back last year in like Feb or 2018 in February, uh, Scooby was talking about how like he had um some type of like fucking calcium deposits that that like that's really prone for mediterranean people on the back of their sinus cavities that's actually pushing on his motherfucking um his uh fucking frontal cortex and shit and like it's actually known to drive men insane and cause like fucking this type of behavior that he's having right now Are you are you giving him an excuse for his craziness? No, 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 no. I'm I'm just saying, like, fucking. That's probably the reason he's acting fucking insane. Like, he he legitimately is actually insane. Okay, that's a fair point, but um, <laughs> um, how does that explain um the cuck Burnside? Oh well, Burnside's just a cuck, you know, like fucking. And when you have somebody like, he doesn't have anybody to tell him different than what he's doing. Yeah, no, like, I almost thought about looking these niggas up, right? Like, okay, so Scooby has me blocked for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, but I can probably find Burnside and uh, Tara. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can I can talk to Tara whenever the fuck I want to. You know what I mean? Um, fucking, like, I've, I've been try tried, okay, like, last year I was in communication with her, like, yo, why... Why is Scooby doing this dumb shit? And she's like, oh, you know, like fucking I hear like their side of the story or whatever, you know, and I'm just like, yo, this is fucking retarded. You know, because I'm I'm I've always been on this level where I'm like, this is dumb. I'm tired of it. Can we not do this? <laughs> that's that's, that's kind of like I'm, I'm fucking sick of this stupid shit. And I fucking I like e-drama. Right. But I like e-drama where it ends. You know what I'm saying? Like, so like when did you see like when Bastard Beast came after me and shit? Yeah, yeah, no. And, you know, I was just thinking to myself, I took a drink of my beer. I set it down. And I was like, you know, it would be really funny if I had started a random beef with Peanwood. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it could, but I don't, I don't think, like you, right I don't, now, I don't, I don't, beef. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> think, I don't think it would go well for you. <laughs> like, yo, like, I will burn your channel to the fucking ground. Like, yo, I don't understand the type of shit that I'm capable of. Like, yo, but like, well, this is what I'm saying. Like, I like beefs, right? But like, I like beefs that'll end like when somebody knows that they've been defeated, right? Right. Well, I never assume I'm defeated, so that that's gonna take you a while. No, <laughs> no, no. Like yo, like I'll hit a nigga so hard that he'll go like Jesus fucking Christ. Like I literally I, made bastard beast I, admit no, on on me stream. And you pretty much agree though. What are you gonna attack me on? You gonna call me fucking like say I have bad teeth? Good for you. You're not the first one to say it. <laughs> I mean, really, what are you doing? <laughs> What did you do? What did you eat? What? Lay down, monkey. Lay down. Good girl. <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? Like, like I'm not saying right. Like yo, <laughs> fucking like yo, man. Like uh, like here's here's the thing, right? Like as I said though, I like beefs that end, right? Like that's kind of my mentality. Like I, if I'm a beef with somebody, I want that beef to be over at some point. And like I'll hit a nigga so hard that he'll go like, "All right, man. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't want any more problems with this nigga." You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, and that's what I did with like Bastard Beast. That's what I did with Antoine. You know what I mean? That's what I did with a lot of niggas. You know what I'm saying? Where like I, I will hit a nigga so goddamn hard that they will no longer want problems with me. You know what I'm saying? Like I will dissect your life and make you want to fucking kill yourself. <laughs> you, well, see, you're, you're assuming i would even watch the content which i wouldn't 
I would. Sure. You'd have to if you're going to respond. You have to. No, that's what I have people for. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like yo, if you're going to respond, you're going to have to watch the content, and that's kind of the point, right? Like yo, I'm not going to do an hour long thing. Like yo, the thing I did on Bastard Beast, I think it was like fucking three minutes and fucking seventy three minutes forty five seconds. Right. Oh, right. dude, I know what you're gonna do. You're just gonna show me spurging out, right? Oh, on, on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, and, hey, that's that's a good way to go. <laughs> like that would probably work. But like fuck yo, you. Like because yeah, I, mean, I can do the same thing to you. I could well, I could have you on repeat saying repeal the nineteenth for fucking twenty minutes straight. <laughs> <laughs> Or like, yo, you could, you know what I'm saying? But like, you know, then I would gain more subs, right? But um, <laughs> you know, because people like that shit, uh, fucking. But yeah, like, all right. So anyway, um, yeah, like with Bastard Beast, like I fucked, I fucked him up real bad. With Antoine, though, like I fed him cat shit. I made fun of his fucking fake accent, and then I uh, stood here and I um, what the hell did I do? Oh, I fucking um. I, I sat here and fucking I said, oh, no wonder you're taking me the fuck on. Like, yo, you need fucking subs and help with your goddamn channel because it's dying. Like, you know, turned it into fucking, you know what I mean, YouTube channel impossible. With <laughs> Ouch, that's rough. Yeah. yeah, this is what I'm saying. Like, yo, I will dig into your hole. I will dig in your ass deeply. You know what I mean? I give no fucks. Well, hey, man, you know, as long as I get a reach around out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, but like, yo, motherfuckers will know it's over. You know what I'm saying? Like, they know it's over. And that's yeah. cool. Like, that's how beefs are supposed to end with Scooby. It never stops. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, to get it back to the actual topic, you're right. Scooby won't let it die. He, he drags it on because that's the only thing keeping him on life support. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, like he just, he never knows when it's over and you're just standing here going like, fuck, dude. Like, come on. This shit's been over for years now. Why are you still talking? Yeah, exactly. And um, in all fairness, if me and you went to war. It wouldn't be a fun war. I don't think either of us would actually enjoy it. No, you know what I mean? No, I like you because, because like, I like you, right? And I think you have way more potential than what you're doing. That's why, like, I always keep telling you that. Like, I'm like, oh, fuck, come on, man. Like, yo, you got this. Like, fucking listen to some of the shit that I tell you, you know, because, like, I want you, like, I want everybody around me to be as good as they can possibly be because that makes me better. You know what I mean? Like, fucking, when I have to rise myself up to, you know what I mean, become as good as you, you know what I mean? It makes me a better fucking YouTuber and shit. It makes me a better man. It makes me have to strive harder to do what I do. You know, and that's why, like, and I respect the shit out of you for doing, like, you know, your Civil War series and now your World War One series and shit. And you're not doing it because, like, fucking people come and watch your fucking streams, which personally, I think you should take those streams to fuck offline and just do them as recordings. Right. So that you can sit here, you know, what I mean, and like just post them up and uh, fucking when you want them, you can down, like if you want, to, you should download them and put them on fucking anchor too, dude, to get the fucking podcast side out. But that's long term views for your channel because they'll always be there and they'll always grow because they're not topical. They're actual content. Yeah, exactly. And thank you. I appreciate it. First off. And, um, no, like, those streams, like, the Civil War and World War One, I, I do it because I want to do it. I do it because I enjoy it. Yeah. Like, I'm not getting the views. I'm not getting the traction. You know what's getting the views? The Red Eye stream. You know, it. it is the show that started everything, and it is the show that keeps me going. But do I really want to just sit here and talk bullshit for fucking three hours at a time? Yeah, it's fun, but it's not my pet project. I would rather talk about history. I would rather talk about something of meaning. You know what I mean? I do. I do. You know, and I'll, I'll be real with you. Like, I'm sitting here, you know what I mean? I'm going over your fucking shit. Like, <clears throat> I think your best content that you do is when you sit down and you actually work on some shit. I don't. Well, yeah, I, don't, I like, think you'd get um, more views. To be honest, you'd get more views 
if you just did regular fucking videos rather than doing your hour long fucking joints, right? Like I'm sitting here and I'm looking at uh, that was that was your morning show and shit, right? Fucking I don't, don't want to compare your morning show or whatever. I want to like all right, here we go. The red eye stream, your geopolitical discussion. Like yeah, man. Like dude, you'd get way more views if you did regular topical fucking videos. Yeah, no, and um, my biggest video, um, over 11,000 uh, views, and it still gets clicks, uh, and I did this shit three and a half years ago, but it was just a six-minute video about Judge Andrew Napolitano. That's all it was about. It was a six-minute video, my biggest video I ever did. That's what put me on the map. I got over 1,000 subscribers from that video like you won't believe this i have a video with like twelve thousand views on it right now that's just called earth right it's er i think it's erth right now it's just a clip i was using for another video that i just needed to grab real quick right you know what i mean and like i just i just snatched it and put it up on fucking youtube because i needed it for a second you know what i mean or i was saving it and like yo, like, yo it has twelve thousand views and like a bunch of lore in the comment section about it <laughs> <laughs> that's funny actually yo, yo i feel you right like yo again like yo but yo those dumb videos get so much fucking like the smaller videos you know what i mean like a short little 10 you know what i mean or eight or fucking seven minute or fucking you know whatever it is they get way more movement on youtube than anything else does well no and i found out you know now that i i have a better computer i'm running obs um, my views are back up. They're back to where they were. Um, I'm gaining subscribers again. I'm back, you know, I'm back in the game because I was losing subscribers and staying stagnant, dude. Um, it's this OBS format that's really helping. And I'm just glad I put in the money and upgraded because my channel would probably be dead in a month if I didn't. The way it was going. Like, yo, and I saw it. Yo, I saw it going down. Yo, what is, yo, what is like your biggest mover right now as far as shit's concerned? I'm turning this into like a fucking interview for Mad Dodge. <laughs> what is my biggest what? Your biggest video per views. I'm looking here. Um, oh, the cabbie, um, the cabbie joint didn't do terrible. Yeah, yeah, no, the cab, like, um, I went as soon as I switched OBS, I'm back over 50 views per video, which I know, like, to a lot of people, like, Razor Fist would laugh at me 50 views, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> you know, but uh, no, my biggest video by far is uh, three and a half years ago, Judge Andrew Napolitano gets no, no, fired. No, 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 I mean, like, yo, what you're doing right now, like, I'm looking and like. Yeah, fucking, yeah. you have two red eyes that are over 50 fucking views. That, that is right after I switched. Yeah. That, that is, um, I switched my uh, thing to OBS only a few days ago. So that is the new standard right there, yeah. what you're looking at. And by the way, yo, I love that fucking drive-in theater thing that you're doing. That thing is fucking beautiful. Right? Like, I kind of, like, okay, first off, I love drive-in theaters. My first yeah. memory of yeah. watching movies was in a drive-in theater, and I watched um, the Batman, the Michael Keaton Batman in um, 89 or 88, right? So I was, like, four or five years old. All I really remember is the drive-in theater and the, the Batman cup. Like, that's all I remember. <laughs> but, you know, like, that's my first memory of a movie theater. <laughs> I'll tell you what I would do if I was you. Um, <clears throat> like, fucking with that drive-in theater thing. Uh, fucking, especially, like, while this COVID shit's going on. Um, I'd have that drive-in theater and like, I'd get rid of the parking lot and like, see if you could find an empty one and see if you can add like an, uh, fucking a, anim like a, like a cartoon car with a top hat, like with somebody in a top hat sitting in the convertible or some shit, you know what I mean? Fucking sitting there watching your shit, watching the fucking drive-in like by himself, you know what I mean? To poke fun at like the social distancing or something. That's not a bad idea. I like that actually. 
And it's your co-host that helped me, man. That oh, yeah. was Excel. Oh, yeah. Excel. He shit. set that up for me, man. He he sent it to me free of charge. He's a good he's a great guy, man. Excel's awesome. And he helped me the fuck out. <laughs> Yo, fuck yeah. You know what I mean? Excel's Excel's his shit. You know what I mean? He's the one actually him and then uh like he are he's too technical for me to be able to learn a lot of things from because he's just like yo he he how do i put this all right so like he knows the words for things that i don't understand right like i know what they are but i have no idea what the fuck they're called right and so like when i'm trying to learn from him it doesn't make any goddamn sense because like it's literally like he's speaking fucking chinese to me yeah, no, that's what I was going to say. It's like he's reading Latin, and you're just like, what? Yeah, what? <laughs> like, did he just maxima, maxima, what, wait, wait, what? But wait, slow uh, down, yeah. slow down, slow down. What do you mean, what do you mean browser source? The fuck are you talking about overlays? Like, what, 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 what the fuck is this bullshit? Like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, yeah, and it's just yeah, like, um, yeah. he does, he does a yeah, bunch he, of like, um, like what I really like what he does with the thumbnails is, um, his, uh, font work that he does. Right. No. And that's why like oh. when you were in the chat and you're like, dude, just listen to me. I'm like, man, I am listening to you and I got help from your co-host because like, God damn it! Like, <laughs> like I, yeah, I was, I was just, yeah, I was just trying to get you to set that fucking um, your uh, what you call it in the background, like your pick. It's basically oh, the filter which I have working now. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, so, you, like you can still hear the TV, but like it doesn't pick it up when you're just sitting there. I'm assuming. Are you on voice activity? Or are you still pushing the talk? Uh, I'm doing push the talk, uh, just because I'm used to it with Discord. Mm. It's easy for me, man. You know what I mean? I, feel I just hit the shift key. I use shift. Yes, yeah, not a bad. No, no, I, mean, I like, use uh, scroll lock. That's what I use because nobody uses that button ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, there's like I, I be trying to figure out like what the fucking button to be using, and I just don't know which one to use because, like. Like I was using spacebar for a while, but like legit, if you if you hold it for a minute and you're in like a text joint or like in in somebody's server, like all of a sudden, like you'll be like fucking seven pages down on spaces. Yeah, no, man. Um, scroll lock because there's like no other use for this button. <laughs> I mean, there's no reason. I don't think I I don't think I have scroll lock on this bitch. Legit. Yeah. Um, on my keyboard, it's um, right and uh, center from backspace, and right above the home um, thing that is just left of your keypad. So, like, it's just a random button right here, but nobody ever uses it. So that's why I'm like, okay, that's my push and talk button, and that that's the way it's been for like three years. Nah, <laughs> like I have, I have like um I have these secondary keys on my mouse I've been using here recently. They're like um, there's two keys on the left hand side of my fucking mouse that never get used. Right, so I just right. oh, so you have them. a gaming mouse like I do. Yeah. I I have the same type of setup. Yeah, yeah. So like I just been I've been using those. You know, I mean because I don't I don't really game or anything. The only games I play are like golf or some like pool. Mini clip games or some shit. Every once in a fucking blue. Uh, you you don't have a PS4 or nothing. Nope. No. 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 Fuck no. I'm a grown ass oh, man. man, dog. When when the when, fuck am I trying oh, to play PS4? It's like that. It's like that. <laughs> uh, you know, fuck you. I like my baseball. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like football, but like I don't. I don't have time to be dedicating myself to be playing football. You know, like, you know, nah, man, lately I've been using it as just added footage for my channel, dude. I'll just throw it up. Like, I'm just playing a, a game of my season of Madden. You know, I just throw it up, whatever. And, you know, you notice I now have a picture of myself up on Discord. I no longer give a shit. I've already been doxxed. Like, my name's Chris. Um, I like Dodgers. And, um, my wife is hot. Get over it. I don't care anymore. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
yo, I feel where you are. I don't know. Like, um, it's weird. It's not so much that like I've already been doxxed or anything like that. Cause like, you know, my face is on a bunch of my videos and shit and it's on everybody else's videos as well. Um, but like my problem I run into is that like the people who watch my content really don't, how to put this, uh, they don't like when I put my face up, they're like, oh man, you're doxing yourself. You know what I'm saying? And like fucking unsub from my channel because like they think like, you know, everybody's supposed to remain hidden and be anonymous and shit. So like, I'm like, ah, you know what? I'll just use the avatar. Motherfuckers know what I look like. You know what I mean? If fucking you're, you know what I mean? A sub, a uh, fucking long time follower of my channel. Well, no, and even if they've watched my channel, uh, you've gone live on my channel on camera. Yeah. So, like, yeah, yeah if they want to find footage of Pinoid, they will. Oh, it's on there. Right? I, I don't I don't hide shit. And hell, my bottom, the bottom right-hand corner of my screen is me. My fucking watermark is me. Yeah, exactly. And, like, you know, I'm just at the point now where I don't care anymore. Where I did care, I was like, "Oh my god, I want to, I want to stay hidden because I don't want to be harassed." I already got harassed, so why stay hidden at this point? Oh yo, what's check, the? Oh yo, you know, <coughs> yo, check this shit out. You want to hear what happened with work? Yeah, go for it. Man. All right, so what's like, right? fucking, I went to, I went to start this new job last week, right? I went to Ohio for like three days and shit, and fucking so. I went out to Ohio. I went there Sunday night. I drove out in a rental car that they got for me, right? And, uh, excuse me. It was 500 fucking miles to drive out to this bitch. It was on. It was almost on um, the in Indiana border, right? It was Dayton, Ohio. So, like, it's basically like driving from the Atlantic Ocean almost to, like, fucking the cornfields of the Midwest, right? It's basically the situation where I was driving. And so, like, after eight hours of riding, I got out there, and I fucking, you know what I mean? I had to turn my fucking car back in, and I went through all this orientation and shit. They gave me a truck Tuesday night. Well, Tuesday afternoon at, like, fucking three o'clock, and they gave me a truck. When I got the truck, you know what I'm saying? I tried to call my fucking new boss or whatever, and this motherfucker didn't pick up the phone. And it ended up being about seven o'clock. I called an Uber, and I fucking paid for a hotel uh, for myself for that fucking night, you know what I mean? Because like I'm not staying in the goddamn truck. I don't. I didn't bring blankets or pillows or nothing with me, you know what I mean? And so I sat here and I fucking went over to uh, the fucking hotel <clears throat> and I fucking stayed there. Woke up in the morning. My boss finally got a hold of me. Fucking, it was like 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the fucking morning. And I fucking he goes, how long can it take you to get to the truck? I was like, I'll be there in like 20 minutes. I can call an Uber. So I called an Uber, got over there, got back to the truck, sat there till like six o'clock. And they fucking finally got me uh, a load, right, to take out to fucking, um, I was supposed to go out to like Bethel, PA, which is like 25 minutes from my house. I'm like, yo, fuck yes. And like fucking they go, oh, wait, we got a different load for you. They gave me a load, goes to Delaware. I take the load. I go over to Columbus. I pick it up. I go over to Delaware. I fucking, um, I uh, drop it off and I call. I go, all right, man, you know what I'm saying? Like fucking so... I'm going to come the fuck home now, right? And he's like, oh, no, 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 fuck, you're not coming home, you know what I'm saying? We need you to fucking drive, you know what I mean, uh, fucking into Philly and then head up to uh, fucking this place up in the goddamn mountains and shit, and then fucking you'll be home, you know what I mean, on fucking uh, Friday. And I was like, nigga, look here, all right, we're not, we're not playing this fucking game right now, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to go home and get some clothes, you know what I mean, get a fucking shower, get cleaned up, get my fucking, you know what I mean, bedding together, whatever, and I'm going to be staying out in the fucking road. So, like, I finally get, I had to go, all right, whatever, fucking. So, like, I fucking end up driving back to Harrisburg. I fucking, I drove back to Carlisle, parked the truck, had my girl pick me up. I got some food in me, went home, got fucking cleaned up, got my, took a shit, you know what I mean, did my fucking laundry and stuff. And then I sat for the whole fucking weekend, right? And fucking Monday comes around, these motherfuckers straight just didn't call me at all, right? No loads, no fucking work, didn't call. Tuesday comes around, I don't hear shit from. Like, whatever. I'll just find another fucking job. I got another job lined up anyway. So fucking like, you know what I mean? I fucking I took this other fucking job. 
Now, I'm sitting here, I'm like, all right, well, I should get a paycheck for what the fuck I did last week. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck, I should get paid for this load, and I should get paid for all the other bullshit or whatever. You know, I should get paid for fucking orientation, which is like $85 a day, which is garbage, right? And you should, on top of that, I'm supposed to get paid for uh, the fucking load, which would have paid me out like 400 bucks or some bullshit like that. And I was like, whatever, fuck, it's pocket money, you know what I mean? So I can get, I can, you know what I mean, ride out in this next job. Well, I was sitting there waiting for this check to come. I checked my comm data card today. And the motherfucking like, yo, there was no money on it. So look at my account. Apparently on Thursday, I already already gotten paid. And they only gave me like $115 for the two days in motherfucking orientation. What? They did not pay me for my motherfucking load that I did. So I called them to this fucking job. And I go, I fucking, where the fuck's my goddamn paycheck? And she goes... I don't know what's going on. Let me call you back. So fucking like I didn't I didn't hear from the lady the rest of the day. My fucking the boss that I was supposed to work for did call me, and I missed his fucking call. So I don't fucking care. I'm not fucking like not interested in fucking playing your game. That you know what I mean you're not gonna give me my fucking paycheck unless I fucking talk to your stupid ass because you don't want to hear the words that are gonna come out of my mouth about all the dumb shit your fucking company put me through on some bullshit, right? And so, like, fucking now, I got to call on the payroll tomorrow and find out what the fucking deal is. You know what I'm saying? Because my boss straight did not put the hours in. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? That, that is some bullshit, man. Um, I guess that's all I can say. That's some bullshit. I feel you. Like, these niggas straight didn't pay me. Yeah, like, and there's nothing else really to say, right? Like, that's some bullshit. Like, yo, like, these companies out here are fucking Garbino. Like, legit. There are far too many fucking companies filled with employees that don't know what the fuck they're doing and don't know how to handle their business properly as fucking, as as companies. Like, real shit. Well, no. And <coughs> like, okay, so, you know, where I'm coming from is, uh, I had a good job. I, I was running a CNC machine, I, you know, doing vacuum forming, cutting plastic parts. Uh, the business went under. I lost my job. Uh, my dream has always been to be a radio host. So I'm running with that. All right? That's where I'm at. Um, I'm willing to take the hazard and give it a shot. Right? My wife is working. We're staying afloat. I'm willing to give it a shot. Not everybody has that that choice, though, right? So, like, you, where you're at, um, you know, you're doing pretty good. You're doing better than I am when it comes to the radio host thing. Um, you're doing great. But that's still not, not paying your fucking child support. It's not paying your rent. I mean, you need that actual fucking work. And for them to fucking stiff you like that, that that's some bullshit, man. Well, that's what that's what garbage companies do. You know what I'm saying? Like legit, this is this is this is what happens. You know what I'm saying? Like when you have a company who thinks that it runs things. You know what I'm saying? Like legit. Like when it when a company thinks that it's like fucking. You know what I mean? That big of a fucking player that it can like just fucking be completely lackadaisical about what it does because it's, you know, I mean, God, I don't even know, man. Like they're just they're just garbage ass fucking company. And you could tell with like the equipment they gave me, you could tell with how they conducted the orientation. You could tell with how the boss didn't know, didn't want to pick up the fucking phone when his day's off. He didn't pick up the phone in the fucking weekend and shit. Like in this other job, I've had them call me like 14 fucking times since they've set up orientation. To square away small little bullshit details to make sure everything's set and everything is cool. Well, yeah, and it's like you probably had what a '96 fucking Peterbilt, no, right? No, like they're no, doing I you had, old no, ass no, fucking had, shit. Yeah, I, I had I had like a 2011 fucking Freightliner, right? Fucking Cascadia with a fucking ten speed in it, which I I miss driving clutch. I'll be real with you, but like it's just. I don't know, man. Fucking, they're just gar. It's a garbage company, in general. You know what I mean? Like fucking, the truck was old, raggedy. It fucking wouldn't idle. 
the one lady uh fucking who was there she ended up sitting in my truck for like three fucking hours because like they gave her a truck that had fucking bugs in it and shit and then the other truck the side that the, that they gave her after that you know and it was cold as fuck outside when i was in ohio it was like fucking 33 degrees and fucking just windy as shit right and like fucking she was standing here uh fucking they gave her another truck and it wouldn't stay it wouldn't run you know what i'm saying like it fucking it wouldn't stay running because the batteries were fucking dead in it like, yo, this is just, it's, you can tell when companies are fucking garbage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly, man. And I don't know. Uh, my uncle, he did long haul, right? Um, east to west. Uh, so, you know, he start. he lived in uh, New Haven, Connecticut. Right. Uh, right. So he would drive, you know, from New Haven all the way over to L.A., or Seattle, he went up to Montreal, you know, I think he even went down to Mexico City, like, he was driving long haul, he made great money, but he had a, a fairly decent company behind him, and then halfway through it, he became an owner-operator, and had his own truck, that's what I was talking to you about the other day, right, yeah. you know, he had his own truck and his own thing, and it worked great for him until he got a habit, you know. Homeboy likes cocaine. It happens. <laughs> All right. I mean, what what are you gonna do? <laughs> oh, I I feel where you are. You know, what I mean, fucking like, like yo, being again, like being an owner operator and being a long haul truck driver, and <clears throat> it's just the money's not there anymore. At least not like it used to be. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's nowhere like... It's... Okay, if you don't have any super hard bills at home, it's not a bad life for you. Right? But, like, if you have... Already have a home life established and you're going into this business, right? Understand, like... Yeah, you can make seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year, but you're not going to see home. You know what I mean? You're not going to be around. You're going to be work if you're local, you'll be working 13, 14 hours a day. If you're all, if you're regional, you'll be going all week. If you're over the road, they, you won't see home for months at a shot. And like, you know, you might make 70 grand a year top end. And even as an owner op top end, you're probably going to be around 100 and 110 at the very most. And that's take home. Right. And that's really like without, you know, me putting money back into the truck. You know what I mean? Like, it's without any major breakdowns, like motors, transmissions. Yeah, that's you know what I mean? you were bringing up, which I never even considered how much he probably threw into that truck. I never really considered that because that's not my lifestyle. You know what I mean? So I I never thought about it. But you're totally right. He He had to do maintenance on that truck. Well, they have required maintenance now through the fucking uh, FMCSA and shit, which is the Federal Motor whatever, blah, 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 carriers uh, and fucking like it's or the administration, right? Because like it's a government entity now that says you have to do, you know what I mean? A certain amount of fucking um, like fucking maintenance to your vehicle every month. Right, you have to do PMs and shit, and you have to do all this other bullshit, and those things got to be up to fucking date, or else you're not allowed to run your fucking vehicle. Like the government, can you can down. you double book it though, like they did in the old days with no, uh, the all e travel logs? It's all e logs now. Oh, uh, so you can't double book anything? Nope. Because you know that was a thing, right? You yeah. know what I'm talking about. Because exactly they all did about. it. They all did it. Yeah, I did it too. You know what I mean? I got you. Like I know what it is. I've ran. I've ran logless. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I was like, like fuck them. You know, like yeah. You know, you know, like my uncle told me about it. You know, after I was grown up. You know, he was like, yeah. Um, you know, I was fudging the logs all the time. I was high on fucking crystal or fucking coke. And I was driving straight through. Why? Because they pay you to get there on time. And, you know, they don't give you enough time to actually get there on time if you follow their fucking rules. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, yeah. 
we're rolling all night long. <laughs> that's what we're doing. <laughs> well, that's well, that's that's always the issue. Is like, all right, so like you know, you have bills to pay, you got mouths to feed, you got things to do at the crib. You know what I mean? And like you know, you have to fucking make a certain amount of fucking money, and the only way you make money is that those wheels are turning. Like, you legitimately don't get a fucking dime if you're fucking if you don't fucking move your motherfucking truck. Right. Like you don't get paid anything for sitting. You don't get paid for fucking like being in a truck all week. You don't get paid a fucking dime for fucking like, you know, what I mean, uh, like maintenance. You don't get fucking paid a dime for all fucking like and like you have to give them most companies. It's two hours. Right. You had to give a fucking company sitting at a fucking door waiting to be unloaded. You know, what I mean, a company will take every minute of that fucking two hours that they can. Like they don't give a fuck, dude. Legit. Yeah, no, and it's it's complete bullshit, dude. Um, you should be paid for the time where you you sit behind the wheel and you leave the place. Now, should you be paid for sleeping? No. Yes. I I don't think you yes. should. Yes. I don't get paid for sleeping. I don't care, <laughs> but like yo, here, here's the thing though, right? Like yo, you're sleeping with your wife and your kids. You're eating your food from your house. That is a fair point, yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, if you're sleeping at, you know what I'm saying, your house, and you're fucking laying next to your wife every night, I have to be on the fucking road, right? And, like, not only that, like, my pay is to get the shit from A to B, right? And fucking is to do it goddamn safely. And in doing so, you know what I'm saying, like, that means I'm dealing with traffic. That means I'm dealing with laws and regulations. That means I'm meeting all the laws and regulations. I'm fucking behind the motherfucking wheel dealing with, you know what I'm saying, retards on the goddamn road and shit. I'm having to fuel the fucking truck. I'm having to fucking pay attention to, like, fucking ref uh, refrigerator temperatures and shit and all types of nonsense. Backing into the fucking dock. That's what that pays for. I don't get paid a fucking dime. To be a fact, it costs me money to live on the road. It's way more expensive to be on the road than it is to be home. I I hear you. And actually, you know, you put it that way, I tend to agree with you, actually. I just, when it comes to working, right, you don't get paid for when you're not working. So when you're sleeping, you're not working. That's where I was. Oh, here's from. Here, here's the thing. If your boss says, I need you at the fucking shop, right? Or at the factory, whatever, right? I need you from fucking 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then when you, when you fucking, when he goes, all right, well, I need you to stay here till tomorrow morning, right? From 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. And you know what I'm saying? You can, you can sleep or whatever the case might be, but you're not allowed to leave. Shouldn't you be compensated for that? Yes, that's why I'm tending to agree with you now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm just, I'm just yeah. telling you where my initial response. Oh, like, hey, if you're not working, you're not working, right? That was my initial response. But I now understand what you're saying uh, more clearly, and I tend to agree with you. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, like, I, like if you figure out all the hours that you spend on the road versus like the amount, like, you know, I mean, like versus how much money you take home, most truck drivers make less than minimum wage. Well, yeah, and I've been to truck stops, man. They're some of the most expensive places in the country. Why? Because they can be. Yeah, They know who they're yeah. catering to, the truckers yeah. who can't afford it. Well, not only that, but like, you know what I mean? Like they have a captive audience. Where the fuck else are you going to stay? What are you going to stay at a rest area and eat vending machine food? Maybe if it has vending machines. Because a lot of rest areas yeah. don't even offer that. Yeah, and you're not going to get a shower. I mean, they rent showers out by the fucking 30 minutes at truck stops on the West Coast. Well, okay, like so that. I mean, where are you going to take a shower at? you yeah. got to go to that truck stop. Yep. Now you're yep. taking a shower. Now, you know, you're you're fresh, you're clean, and you're hungry. Where are you going to eat? At that fucking truck stop, right? Yep. 
you know, and that and that's kind of the fucking point. You know what I'm saying? It's that legit. They don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like yo, and these companies, like they're in, like they're in cahoots with the goddamn fucking um, truck stops and shit. Right, like yo, the truck stops stand here and work with these companies all the time. Like you're only allowed to stop at certain truck stops. Like you can't stop at a mom and pop truck stop and fuel up. If you need fuel, really? you, yeah, you have. Yeah, I can like almost every company has certain fucking truck stops that they're allowed to use, whether it be Loves or somebody will be just be pilots. Other places it'll just be flying J's. Well, other um, places I was it'll just say be pilot, petrols. pilot, pilot's a big one over here on the West Coast. Well, yeah. So that's what I was going to bring up. Is sometimes, pilot. Yeah, yeah. sometimes it's only Petros. TAs. You know what I mean? Like, yo, there's only certain places you're allowed to stop. And if you want to go to a mom and pop's truck stop to get a decent meal, you you can't even, like, they don't have contracts there. So, therefore, like, a lot of them won't even let you fucking stay there because you don't get fuel. Hell, half of truck stops you have to pay to stay at. Fucking a lot of these, like... Um, if you're in D.C., if you're in Maryland, if you're in uh, Boston, there's a lot of places where, like, legit, you have to pay the truck stop to stay there. That's kind of crazy um, because, I mean, um, if you look at, like, Walmart, right, um, you can go park in the back of Walmart usually. All you have to do is ask for permission. And they'll just let you park back there and sleep. I'm going to tell you like this. Right, they don't give a shit. Walmarts will literally put up, like, I've not seen it all over the fucking place. Walmarts and a lot of these, this is back to that yuppie thing, this yuppie dumb bullshit thing. Fucking, they will put up fucking metal motherfucking bars, right? Like archways over top of their fucking entrances to their parking lots to stop truckers from going in. That's ridiculous. Like, that's why I hesitated. I was just thinking about it. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, you would think that Walmarts would be wide open, but they're not. You, they're, Most Walmarts you are not allowed to stay at. Yeah, but if you're a homeless piece of shit with six kids in the back of a station wagon, you're good, right? Well, that, that's bullshit. Well, well, even then, like, you're going to get banged staying at most Walmarts. You know what I mean? Like, fuck, you know, well, they're, they're I don't know how it is over there, but on the West Coast, dude, we have people um, that just live at Walmart, man. Nah, like, not out here. Happens. Not out here. Fucking like, yo, like, the police have, like, uh, fucking patrol cars stationed at every Walmart in the area to stop that type of shit. Oh, okay. So you guys did have it, but you put an end to it. No, we're at the we still have it stage. No, nah, nah, <laughs> nah, like yeah, we have what we have is we have police there to stop fucking truckers from parking at Walmart's, right? And uh, fucking they, and while they're stopping people from st uh, parking at Walmart's, they also stop people from living in the fucking parking lots and any homeless people from fucking hanging around being vagrants. Yeah, like, uh, I don't understand why the homeless congregate in Oregon. It rains a lot, and it's not very nice for homeless people. I don't get why you congregate here. I really don't. Um, You should probably stop it. Maybe take a step back and look at your own fucking existence and decide that Florida is better. I, I'm just saying. Um, But... The fact is, they are here. And um, we have tent cities in Eugene and Portland. We have people that park their fucking RV in the back of the Walmart parking lot and live there regularly. Like, that's their fucking address. I mean, this shit is ridiculous, dude. Well, Walmart, here's, here's the real bitch about Walmart is that, uh, what the fuck are y'all doing? Yo, calm down, fucking motherfucking kids. Now, nah, like, um, fucking, okay, so out here on the East Coast, they treat homeless people like shit, right? Like, nobody cares about homeless people on the East Coast. Like, they're fucking, like, I've literally seen cops pour out fucking homeless people's bottles and then hit them in the head with it. Like, fucking, they don't give a fuck about homeless people out here at all. And nobody has any respect for them and nobody cares. 
Like they had that. So that's what that's why they're mostly on the then, because we actually give a fuck. Yeah, like you're much nicer to them than we are. Like we're fucking like we're savages to them. Like fucking, you don't have like bum fights and shit out in California and fucking Oregon like we do. You know what I mean? Like out in the hood, like the kids will be fucking like um paying the homeless people to fight each other and shit. Like that was a, that was a thing when I was a kid. Like that's what we used to do. Is you'd pay homeless people like to go and fucking like do crazy things or whatever, or, like fucking hurt themselves and shit. Like we're fucking savages towards the homeless out here. Like nobody fucking nobody cares about homeless people in this neck of the woods. That that's kind of messed up, but I hear you. <laughs> like you're just like motherfucker. That's that's how they're seen. You know what I mean? Like fucking after the two thousand nine uh, housing collapse, they had a bunch of homeless people who were like living underneath the bridges and shit or living underneath living out by the river they sat there and bulldozed their fucking camp and then set all of it on fucking fire the police did yeah see we don't do that over here we go um hey how about you uh you you stop that and the homeless are like um no we're actually gonna grow in population by uh tenfold fuck you and we're like, oh, okay. Um, I just thought we'd ask. Um, <laughs> nah, see, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like the homeless people out here, like they had like uh, like public gardens, right, for like the community, and like so homeless people would stop by to get something to eat, and then they bulldozed the gardens because they were feeding the homeless people. No shit. <laughs> God damn, dude. Like, <laughs> wow. Yo, the East Coast. No, that's hates, hardcore. <laughs> yo, yo, they hate homeless people out here. <laughs> like, fuck your tomatoes, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, if you want to beg for change in most of the places on the East Coast, they make you go get a fucking license to beg for change. You, you got... <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Whoa. All right. I'll, I'll try to calm down. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Who the fuck has the money to pay for a license to beg for money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, we hate homeless people out here. <laughs> like, I don't think you understand. <laughs> Damn, that is some real hatred right there. That is fucked up. Like, that's Boobar. Fucked beyond all fucking recognition. <laughs> I foobar. Like, they hate homeless people. Hate homeless people. Like, legit. You know what I'm saying? Like, every time, like, they have fucking whole helicopter divisions of the state police dedicated to finding homeless people in the woods, reporting them, and then burning their shit to the ground. Holy shit. You guys are savages. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Yo, we, they hate homeless people on the East Coast. Fucking hate them. We literally, like, they hate them so much, they'll pay them to leave. Yeah, they sent them to the West Coast. Yep. Fuck you. Yep. <laughs> like, Cal- yeah, you better head West. New York, <laughs> head New, West York, nigga. New York has, New York has whole charities and funding things like to fucking pay for homeless people's train tickets the fuck out of here to somewhere to fuck out oh my god it is all the west coast isn't it yep. you fucking bastards yep. california be trying <laughs> california be trying to send them back to florida and then like florida fucking turns them right around at the train station and sends them back to yeah, Cali yeah, with, another, with a sandwich and another yeah, ticket yeah. Yeah, hey, 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 uh, homeless fucking Bob, you better go to Oregon if California don't want you, <laughs> but you're not coming home, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> you don't get to live on the East Coast. Damn, dude, that's some hardcore shit. I'm trying wow. to tell you, like, yo, we hate homeless people on the East Coast, like, motherfuckers have zero respect for homeless people, like, none. Like, and no one cares. Like, the newspapers will have, like, a front page thing about them burning down a homeless encampment, right? And then people will be like, oh, fucking good. Like, it'll be a positive yeah, message. Yeah, burn it twice, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> Is that shit still on fire? <laughs> Can I go pee on it to put it out? Like, yo. Damn, dude. <laughs> That's hardcore. Um... I get it though. Um, 
No, man, and I was homeless. I decided I was going to pull myself up, and I handled business. You know what I mean? Yeah. But a lot yeah. of people, they don't care. They just wallow in the self-pity. That's a, that's a them issue, not a me issue. And it shouldn't be an East Coast or West Coast issue. It really shouldn't. Um, honestly, I'm joking around and saying, you know, you're a bunch of savages. That's evil. But no, that's probably the best way to do it. You shame them. Make them come up. Make them fucking rise to the occasion. Or fail. Because that's all there is in life. You either rise up or you fail. That's it. Yeah, most of them are just fucking junkies. Like, legit, they're just people who, like, you know, their family got tired of dealing with. You know, like, that's that's where the vast majority of the homeless population come from. Is just fucking people who were addicts and, like, everybody tried to help for fucking years. And then motherfuckers just go, I'm fucking tired of you. And then throws them the fuck out. Because they're like, if you're not willing to help yourself, we're not going to fucking help you anymore. We are sick of dealing with your nonsense. And having the police around and your friends rob us and all this fucking nonsense. And I'm like, get the fuck out. We're fucking done with you. And that's the vast majority of the homeless population. You know what I mean? But, but no, um... I totally agree. It's just, uh, as somebody that was homeless myself, I wasn't one of that um, group, right? Um, I had lost my job, and I had fallen on hard times, and I had to pull myself up. And I decided myself that, you know, hey, I'm going to be homeless. I bought a tent. I bought a cooler. I bought tarps. I handled my business. I stayed off the grid. And I got a goddamn job and got a place to live. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, right. you handle your own. You have to. Like, I was debating. Grow up. Debating. Be a man. Yeah, I was debating on going and living on one of the islands in the river fucking for, you know, I mean, a summer at one point. I was like, yo, I should just go fucking do that. Like, legit. Just go fucking camping all summer long. You know what I'm saying? I'll work. And, I'm like, when I'm not working, I'll just go live on a fucking island and shit. You know what I mean? And fucking cook out and camp and fucking fish and just, you know what I mean? Get back to being whatever the fuck I want to be. You know what I mean? But it, it kind of never really came to be. But it was like a legit thought in my head. But it wasn't really going to be like a homeless situation. I mean, it would be, but it was kind of like, I'm going to be in the truck all fucking week any goddamn way. Like, why the fuck should I pay fucking rent somewhere? You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And like, okay, there is a way to rise yourself up out of the situation you're in. And you don't need to wallow in self-pity. You can rise up and get out of this situation if if you fucking are good enough to do so. But, I mean, not everybody is made of the same metal that you and I are, right? I mean... I, I went from nothing to owning a shitty RV, to owning a little bit bigger trailer, to owning my own home. You know what I mean? I, I knew that I had to go in steps. I understood it. A lot of people don't. They want to go from zero to a hundred. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's... Nobody... All right, see... And that's the problem with most popular culture today is the fact that, like, nobody shows work anymore. You know what I mean? Like, nobody shows, like, how they got to where they are. You know, like, motherfuckers just assume that that's their privilege and that's what they're supposed to live like. Like, you know, my daughters, they watch um, these uh, fucking DVDs or whatever, right? And, like, for instance, there's, like, uh, this Barbie family, you know what I mean, or whatever, you know, because, like, they're fucking little girls, you know what I'm saying, and they love, you know, they, they, they think they're princesses, and they are, they're daddy's princesses, but still, you know what I mean, fucking, like, they stand here and they watch these Barbie movies and shit, and there's no work shown, you know what I mean, there's, there's no work at all shown on any of that shit, you know what I mean, it's all just, like, fucking this, it, it's like, they're naturally rich, and they're supposed to be that way, 
And there's no, like, ever, like, them fucking grinding it out to make shit happen. There's no building to get where they are. But they have everything they could possibly fucking want. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And um, when it comes to the princess thing, I totally get it, dude. <laughs> my daughters are my little princesses. Oh, they God. are. And, like, my daughter, Brianna, she goes... He, no, and it's kind of it's kind of funny. She actually sticks her nose up and goes, "I'm Daddy's <laughs> princess." And I like you know, no shits given. I guess this little girl. <laughs> oh, I feel you. I feel you. Like I'll be honest with you, my my youngest daughter. You know what I mean? She's one, and she is like one of us. You know what I'm saying? Like fucking, she's uh. Not like one of me and you, but like she's one of us as far as us guineas are concerned. Like uh, fucking she looks like a mix between my oldest or my youngest son and my fucking uh, my fucking my little sister and shit. Right. And so like she just breaks my heart every time I fucking look at her. You know, <laughs> like cause she is she is the spinning image of fucking, you know, what I mean, fucking a thousand years worth of my family's fucking DNA. You know, and it just, it fucks me up. You know I mean? It really does. Like, I can't, you know I mean, stand here and deny her shit. You know, you really, like, I, like every time I yell at her, she'll fucking cry. And then, like, she'll just come and crawl on my lap and I'll have to fucking hug her. Because I don't have a choice. Like, it's not in me to fucking be mean to her. Um, no, and the thing is, like, no... Okay, we're both dads, right? And we have daughters. Right. Yeah. Of course, they're going to be daddy's little princess. And yeah, they're going to be uppity about it. Like, especially my daughters. Like, they, like I said, my daughter Brianna will just look at you and go, I'm daddy's little princess. You know, pretty much fuck you. I don't need to listen. <laughs> I, I, I'm better than you automatically. <laughs> I mean, and you're right though when it comes to the entertainment they watch um it never shows any struggle but the thing is though real life shows the struggle right because i'm no. not rich all right all right, all right. Hang i'm on. not yo, rich yo, I'll be, so yo, they I'll be, see yo, it yo, they keep, see yo, what's keep, going on yo keep keep yeah. talking i'm a motherfucking rep i'm just gonna walk i gotta go out to the kitchen real quick and grab my cigarettes be right back Oh, okay, but, like, they see what's going on with the actual struggle, real-life issue, right? So they understand we're not rich. Um, we can't just do what we want. We're, you know, like, yeah, you're daddy's little princess, but you also have to obey rules. It, it's just the way it is. Dad has to obey rules. If you're the princess, then dad's the king. If he has to obey rules, then so do you, princess. I, I mean, okay. all right. So, like, here's here's my mental, right? Um, okay. Well, as far as like, you know, I mean, fucking the kid, the dudes having to obey rules. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of like, and see, this is this is where like the MGTOW mentality and me part ways, right? Because like. There's a lot of dudes who want to be treated like females, right? They want to be princesses. <laughs> and I go, no. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, the reasons why men are supposed to have more rights and freedoms and privileges than females are is because of the fact that you have more responsibilities. Right? Females aren't responsible for their fucking actions. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Because like the truth of the matter is, and even according to the government, they're not human beings. They're not full grown fucking people ever. You know what I mean? Like, yo, because that's not how we treat them. We never treat them as people. We treat them as children forever. That's why they get one fifth the time that a dude does. That's why they're not responsible for what goes in of or comes out of their vaginas. That's why they get preferential fucking treatment when it comes to fucking jobs. That's why, you know, I mean, there's whole rules made up about how you're allowed to interact with them on the fucking in a job or in a fucking professional environment. 
That's why there's special privileges and fucking, you know what I mean, protections for them in the fucking colleges and schools. That's why there's Title IX funding. That's why there's a welfare state. That's why, you know what I'm saying, there's not a term deadbeat mom. There's only a term deadbeat dad. You know what I mean? And these are all governmental and societal things that we've all agreed upon. But on the same point, all of a sudden somebody says they're equal. And at some point, somebody has to go, no, no, they're not. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because like they are the best of us and the worst of us at the same time. They're able to break you at a whim. You know what I mean? Because all of us are men. You know what I'm saying? We've all had our fucking heads and hearts and fucking souls broken by a female at some point in our lives. You know what I mean? They can betray you and destroy you faster than any man can without a motherfucking sword. But on the same point, they'll make you want to be a better human being and climb mountains and make the world into a fucking place that makes them fucking smile more. That's kind of the whole fucking point. You know what I'm saying? And therefore, I don't treat my daughters the way I treat my sons because I want my sons to be strong. I want my daughters to be daughters. I want them to be wives someday. I want my sons to be husbands and fathers someday. And those are two separate things. That's interesting um, because I I am a father. I have uh, six children, uh, three boys, three girls. I tend to treat them the same. And what I do is I I teach them about history, politics, and I let them know my position. I don't force it upon them, but they know what it is. And um, I tend to do that because I believe that everybody should be treated equally, no matter your gender or anything. Um, So... Do I want a strong daughter who will stand up for herself and not have to call daddy? Yeah, I do. Now, if she does need to call dad, dad will grab the gun and be right there. You know what I mean? Like, dad's on his way. Like, not a problem. But I don't want to have to do that. I want her to protect herself. I don't, I don't want my daughters to protect themselves. They don't need to protect themselves. That's that's not their fucking job. That's not their position. Like they don't they're not supposed to be strong. They're not supposed to be physically strong. They're not supposed to stand here and be able to match fucking wits or match fucking you know what I mean might against a fucking man. You know what I mean? That cause that's not how you measure them. You know what I mean? Like and no, they don't get treated the same as my boys, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because they don't wanna do the same thing that my boys do. My boys want to get dirty and pull bugs off the wall and fucking, you know, chase fucking fish in the middle of a river. They want to stand here and put on fucking shoes and dresses and, you know, I mean, fucking do their hair and put barrettes and things. And they, they want to fucking sit here and, you know, do girl stuff. You know, I mean, they're taught, you know, I mean, to cook and clean. And my sons are taught to cook and clean as well. But, you know, I mean, that's more of, you know, you fucking have to have responsibility over yourself and be responsible for what you're doing. You know, I mean, but they're taught, you know, I mean, that, you know, they're taught to what their life, what will make them happiest in life, not what's going to make them happiest when they're 18. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm aiming for 30 with my kids. Like, I, that's what I look at with my children. I'm like, I want my children to be good at 30 years old. Right? Right. Yeah. I know, and I, I understand what you're saying. I'm not necessarily disagreeing. I'm just saying my my um, approach is a little bit different. I want my daughters to be just as much as a smart ass as I am. You know what I mean? I want them to be... Yeah, exactly. Like my daughter just said, I don't have a filter. That's what I want. I want somebody that's going to be as, um, as, as not, they don't give a fuck just like I don't. Okay. Let's put it that way. All right. Well, like, here's the thing, right? Like, so 
I don't need them. Like, I need them to be smart in the world. I need them to be smart in the ways of man. I need them to be smart in the ways of society and highly adaptable, right? But I want them to be... I want them to be good wives and mothers one day. I don't care if they go to college. I don't want them to go to college. I don't want them... You know, I don't care if they do well in school. I don't give a shit about any of that because none of that matters. Like, fucking, like, yes, I'd like them to be smart enough to educate their own children someday. But on the same point, I want them to be happy with their lives and not be forced to take 10,000 pills a fucking day. You know I mean? In order just to get through and in order to just survive. You know what I'm saying? Like, in order to, like, fucking, you know, be happy with themselves and be fulfilled in their life, I don't want them to fucking stand here and be on Prozac and Zoloft and all the other fucking shit. I want them to go, eh, you know, this fucking this life fucking is all right. You know what I mean? And fucking, mm-hmm. like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, no, and I don't get people to have to do that. Like, my wife doesn't do that. I don't, I don't personally like pills. Okay, so... I'm automatically, like, even if I was prescribed that shit, I'd tell the doc to fuck off. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, like, on the same point, you know, like, I also don't want them to end up strung out on fucking heroin. I don't want them, you know what I mean, be fucking massive potheads or be massive drinkers. You know, I want them to be well-rounded, well-loved motherfucking children, like, you know, and like, and that's the thing, is like, you know, like, I'll fucking cuddle with them and hold them and love them and, you know, I mean, I'll fucking spoil them and shit, you know, and again, like, my two-year-old, she's a goddamn terrorist and shit, she'll climb the fucking drapes, you know what I'm saying, like, fucking, she's, she's a fucking savage, you know, and she'll fucking, you know, walk through the fucking woods with me and shit, and, you know, she'll go catch fucking salamanders and she'll fucking, you know, go and fucking, you know, she, she likes doing that type of stuff. You know, and all of them. Well, like, yeah, them, like know? my my four year old daughter Brianna, she'll wake me up. This is how she wakes me up. Daddy is horsey, and she just gets on top of me and just starts fucking jumping. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sleeping, little girl. She's like, I don't care, Daddy. You're horsey. I'm, I'm no, I'm not a horse. It's like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's, and it's the same way with mine. You know what I mean? Like fucking, you know, and I don't have any problem, like, you know, spoiling them and loving them and, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and accepting them for what they are. I don't want them to be men. You know what I mean? Like I, I have boys, right? Like they're, they're great. You know what I'm saying? Like they're fucking boys. They're what boys are supposed to be. You know what I mean? Now I have girls and I want my girls to be what girls are supposed to be. Like it's, and, and they don't have to be the same. They're not going to be the same, and I don't expect them to be the same. None of my children are the same. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Even between the girls, you know, I have three girls, three daughters. They are totally different from each other. Yeah. You know, one, my oldest daughter is a tomboy, right? She doesn't like dresses. Yeah. Yeah, she... See, she she doesn't like dresses or anything like that. But then again, my middle daughter and my youngest love dresses. They're you know, divas. well, yeah, they're they're better than you. Get over it. <laughs> well, like, you know, like my my oldest daughter, you know, what I'm saying like the one, you know, whatever, right? She uh fucking. She is the prissiest among them. You know what I'm saying? Like, she just, like, she's a type that'll snap her fingers. You know what I mean? And then my middle daughter, like, she'll be the one to curse you the fuck out in a heartbeat. You know what I mean? Like, that's what she, like, she'll stand here and she'll look at grandpa and she'll go, no, 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 no. Right? You know what I mean? Like, fucking grandpa be like, you better back up. And I'm like, man, you better fucking stop motherfucking looking at her like that. She's going to talk to you any sort of way she wants to. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, you ain't, like, you know, look here, man. Like, if, if those eyes don't break your heart, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, there's something wrong with you. You know, and then my youngest. That's, younger, that's awesome, though. <laughs> like, you're looking at mom and like, hey, you need to back up. Like, <laughs> this little girl's got a point. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then, you know, like, fucking... Uh, you know, fucking my youngest one, you know, like she's just a sweetheart, you know what I mean? Like she's scared of the whole world still, you know, and like, uh, she went through a bit of an episode 
And I, I'm wondering if it affected her. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But uh, like I woke up or like I was uh, on stream with AP to one day and we were hanging out. I think we were over on Doc's channel or some shit. And we, me and AP were doing our, uh, we were doing our thing. And all of a sudden, like fucking, she uh, fucking, like I hear this knocking and I went over and she's sitting there having a fucking seizure in her fucking playpen and shit or in her fucking bassinet. And like fucking i took her to the hospital like she was all limp and shit and i didn't know what the fucking wrong with her and to this day like every time you pick her up like she just latches on like she don't want to fucking like she's scared she's gonna fall off you know what i mean yeah um uh, my son bradley um he's really afraid of heights too like you pick him up and you know how you can throw um a toddler up in the air and they yeah. usually laugh yeah, yeah. not him yeah. Like, he will freak the fuck out. He does not like that shit. Yeah. Well, all these, all of them are like that. I mean, fucking all of uh, my baby's mom's kids are like that. Fucking hell. Her fucking, um, her oldest son, her fucking son that she has, like, that nigga can't even walk up and down the steps without fucking, like, being, like, I have, like, wooden steps outside of my house to get to the second floor or whatever. It's like a, it's like a deck or whatever to get up to the second floor. And, like, he'll stop halfway and be frozen, paralyzed in fear because he's worried he's going to fall the fuck through. Yeah, I, I don't know what to do about that type of situation, you Me know, because... Yeah, like, you know, when it comes to a phobia, it's hard to break through that. Yeah, I just, I'm just like, suck it up, buttercup. You know what I'm saying? Da, 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 da. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, fucking, like, yeah. fucking you know, get over it, man. <laughs> like, it's the best I can, best you can hope to do. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, you got to face your fucking fears and get over shit. You know what I mean? Like, they're always going to be there. But, like, you know, like, I don't, I don't like heights at all in any way, shape, or form. But I'll be damned if, you know, I'm not going to be able to walk up and down fucking steps. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Well, no, for sure. But, like, um, when I was flying in the Shreveport, man, I was sitting right by the wing, right? And they're banking in. And um, we're rolling in at uh, 8 a.m. and there's um, there's overcast, so we're we're um, shooting through the clouds and then rolling in. Um, and this plane, dude, I swear to God, it looked like I was headed straight for the ground. Um, and I'm like, um, guys, uh, hey, hey, is the pilot still awake? I, I mean, are are we about to die? No, the ground's getting closer, guys. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, that's how planes work, man. You know, like fucking. Well, yeah, I know, but dude, I was freaking out a little bit. Okay, Yo, legit. <laughs> you should you should see. There's um, there's this John. There's like his French airplane uh, or fucking French airline. Where, like, they stand here and, like, they have, like, the roughest landings in all the airline industry. It's the craziest shit ever. They have, like, whole compilations of this fucking airline. It just, they legit, like, I don't know how the fuck it is that they're fucking landing these goddamn planes without crashing them. Because they hit the deck and it's just, like, they're skidding, screeching, fucking, like, yo, it's the most bouncing and shit. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen in my fucking life. No, and that was an interesting fact, right? Okay, so I'm looking out the window, and I'm, like, freaking out, okay? When we landed, it was smooth. It was silky smooth, dude. Like, when I landed in Houston on the Airbus, that was rougher than the landing in the Shreveport. And I'm just like, okay, I was freaking out for absolutely nothing. That's a good thing, obviously, because I'm on an airplane. So, you know, if I'm freaking out and it's for a reason, then we have a big, bigger problem than me freaking out. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, I feel you. Shit, shit just went wrong. <laughs> Like yo, man, that like yo, flying scares the shit out of me, man. I've never done it before, personally. <laughs> like, it's like, I don't know. I'm probably gonna try it someday. Like, I like, I legit, I want to go parachuting. You know what I'm saying? I do. Like, I want to jump out of a fucking aeroplane, but <sighs> yo, I've never even been in one. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, see, yeah, this was my first uh, airplane trip, and I went to flight school, right? So. 
I got as far as the simulator. And then um, I was raising my oldest son on my own. So I dropped out voluntarily. I knew my limitation. So I dropped out of school and took care of my son. I was falling asleep on the bus and shit, dude. It wasn't good. I wasn't going to be able to hang. You know what I mean? Oh, I and I knew it. it. Yeah. And I knew it. So I dropped out. But, um, yeah, so you're pretty much in the same camp as I was, where you never really been in an airplane. Yeah, dude. That descent, that that's a bitch, man. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's it freaks me the fuck out, dude. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, I feel you. I feel you. Yo, it's been two hours. It's been two hours. So I'm gonna tell you what, yo, motherfuckers, make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. Go check out fucking uh, Mad Dodge Productions and shit. Link will be in the goddamn description. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna tag him in the motherfucking description as well. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know the situation. Yo, it's Tom Peace. You know the deal. Peace be like one.